Good evening. Thank you for joining me in this short prayer and reflection. As we enter into this sacred time and space, I invite you to take a moment of silence while I burn some incense and light more candles. Let my prayer be set forth to you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of our sins and may the Holy Spirit give us his grace and comfort. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together, let us recite Psalm 31. O God, I have come to you for shelter. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in the justice of your ways. Incline your ear to me and be swift to save me. Be for me a rock of refuge, a fortress to defend me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Lead me and guide me for your name's sake. Deliver me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me. For you are my strength. Into your hands I commit my spirit. For you will redeem me, eternal God of truth. Let us now open our hearts and our minds and our ears to the word of God. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who was talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the son of man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said to them, Elijah indeed coming first is to restore all things. How then is it written about the son of man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt. But I tell you that Elijah has come and they did to him whatever they please, as it is written about him. The word of the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's gospel story 
is from the book of Mark. First, let me tell you how much I enjoy, first of all, giving you a little bit of uh, background information on the scriptures that we tend to reflect on. Um, because there are differences in the writing styles by those we believe wrote the gospel stories. Um, this evening, we have heard the story of the Transfiguration. Like the story that we had on Sunday, which was the prodigal son, it's a story we all know well and probably can recite verbatim. Um, this story, the Transfiguration, appears in three of our Gospels. It uh, shows up in Matthew and Luke and, as we've heard tonight, in the book of Mark. It's also referred to in the Gospel of John, just briefly, um, chap uh, verse 12, chapters 28 through 29, and then again in 2 Peter, um, chapter 1, verses 17 through 18. As uh, I might have mentioned in an earlier reflection, Mark is one of the shortest of the four Gospels, and it is believed that it was the first attempt at writing the apostolic letters or narratives. But let's talk about the transfiguration narrative. In this we find that Jesus has been speaking to a crowd. It's probably getting late in the day and he's tired and he decides to take some of his um, disciples, particularly uh, James, Peter, and John, and they walk up the mountain. Um, they're doing this to have some time apart, some time to themselves. When they reach their destination, Jesus changes. He takes on his divine glory, and Moses and Elijah appear with him. Peter, who's usually the most outspoken, uh, says, oh, this is great. Let's build some booths and we'll talk some more. Um, there is a lot of excitement in this moment, in the first part of the story of the Transfiguration. Uh, you know, Jesus gets to choose these three disciples. They get to walk with him and go up the mountain. Jesus changes into his divine glory, showing them that he is indeed the Son of God. And uh, Moses and Elijah appear. Um, who wouldn't be excited at this moment? There's a lot of energy. Then, a cloud overcomes them. Now, overcoming also means to take control of a situation. Um, and this cloud must have been like a fog that you can't even see your hand in front of your face. And within this cloud, probably like surround sound, there's a thunderous voice that says, this is my son, listen to him. Uh, at this point, the disciples are enveloped in fear and terror. Um, I think I might be a little bit scared myself. And then suddenly, again, in a blink, the cloud is gone and there are the disciples standing with Jesus, their rabbi, whom they have been following. What an array of uh, feelings and changes all within such a short amount of time. Um, and I think that this, today in this story, and what I've been pondering over the week in this story, is the crux of this story, change. We see change going from the ordinary to the extraordinary. Change from what the world expects us to be to what we are expected to be as followers of Christ. Change isn't an easy journey. It's never easy for any of us, especially as we get older. Um, it's filled with a roller coaster of feelings, always. Um, but if we allow ourselves to let God take control, to overcome us, and listen to what he advises us, which is to listen to Jesus. Keep our eyes and our thoughts on our divine Savior, Jesus Christ. Then we can weather all of these changes, whatever they happen to be. And 
we can get through life with the company of Jesus. Amen. We continue praying and together we recite the Lord's Prayer. And after the Lord's Prayer, we will move to the suffrages. And after each petition, I would like to invite you to respond by saying, We entreat you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The response for each petition is, We entreat you, O Lord that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, in trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Let us pray in these difficult times. We pray for lives lost, families torn apart, lost and lonely, homeless, hungry, afraid. We pray for factories destroyed in an instant, for machinery shattered, livelihoods ruined. We pray for rescuers finding survivors alongside bodies, courageous, undaunted, hopeful. We pray for recovery in the years to come for restoration, generosity, healing, closure. Lord of heaven and earth, of all nations and peoples, of all faiths and no faith, reveal yourself to those who are suffering. Reveal yourself to all who are refugees. Reveal yourself to those who are powerful. Reveal yourself to all who are powerless. Reveal yourself to ordinary people in their daily, daily lives, that this world might reflect your love and your glory. Amen. We pray for the sick and those who are caring for them. O God, the source of all health, we lift up to you all who are suffering from pain and sickness especially Kathy and Catherine. Help them to trust in you so that with calm expectancy they may make room for your power to comfort and bring wholeness. We also pray for all who are taking care of the sick. Sustain them with your grace that with love and patient understanding they may be strengthened through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For tonight, let us pray. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in your presence, O God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all have no peace. 
the night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May God preserve us in our walk waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen.